Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name is Laura, and I'm part of the team at Ivory Prep, which is a specialist organisation that helps students prepare for Oxbridge and other top UK university admissions. We support students through admissions tests like TMUA, MAT, STEP, and now the new ESAT. If you're applying to Cambridge, Imperial, or UCL for engineering or science related courses, this video is for you. I'm also someone who's gone through this process myself, and when I applied to do natural sciences at Cambridge, I had to sit the NSAA, which was the old version of the ESAT for natural sciences. In this video, I'll not only break down the ESAT for you, but also share what I wish I'd known back when I was preparing. Here's a quick overview of what I'll cover. First, a complete breakdown of the ESAT. Next, I'll go through how to build a winning preparation strategy. After that, I'll give insider advice from successful candidates, including myself. And at the end, I'll share a realistic four month study plan that will help you achieve your goals for the ESAT. Let's dive in. So what is the ESAT? The ESAT, or Engineering and Science Admissions Test, is accepted by Cambridge, Imperial College London and UCL for entry into engineering and science-based courses. It's a computer-based test made up of three 40-minute modules. Everyone has to take Mathematics 1 and then you choose two additional modules from Biology, Chemistry, Physics or Mathematics 2. Scores range from 1 to 9 much like the IELTS scale. I'll talk more about the scoring system later but a score of 7 or higher is generally considered competitive. Another thing to note is that there's no calculator allowed for any part of the test. So despite the fact that you'll be doing a lot of different calculations, all of those will rely on your mental maths. When I took the test, I chose um, biology, chemistry, and of course, maths one. I found that the biggest challenge was definitely managing your time because they give you so many different questions to go through in so little time. And I'll talk more about my experience more later. So, what does the ESAT actually test? This isn't just about memorising facts. The ESAT tests scientific and mathematical reasoning, problem solving under time pressure, analytical thinking, and how well you can apply your knowledge in unfamiliar contexts. One thing I noticed about the questions when I was doing the tests is that they're often worded in ways that feel unfamiliar, even if the core topic is something you've studied before. And it's similar to how you'll actually be tested at these competitive universities, where they'll be making you do a lot of problem solving exercises. So who exactly needs to take this test? First of all, it's required for people applying to Cambridge for subjects like engineering, natural sciences, and vet med. If you're applying to Imperial, you'll need it for engineering, physics, and computing. And for UCL, most engineering and science-based courses require the ESAT. Alternatively, it can also be advantageous to your application. Other unis might adopt the ESAT or use it for international applicants because it can help strengthen your application by showing scientific competency. Each module is 40 minutes long with 27 multiple choice questions. That gives you roughly 1.5 minutes per question, so speed and accuracy really matters. Module 1 is Mathematics 1, which covers core mathematical concepts. Modules 2 and 3 are from your choice of science subjects or Maths 2, which is typically a bit more advanced. Depending on what subject you're applying for, each sub university might have specific module requirements, so make sure you check their websites carefully. When I was choosing modules, I picked the ones I felt strongest in. Because I was doing biology, chemistry and maths for A-level, those were the modules that I chose. Strategy plays a big role here, so make sure you pick the best modules for you. So, to clarify, everyone takes Mathematics 1, then you choose two more from Biology, Chemistry, Physics or Mathematics 2. 
Some courses may require specific module combinations. So once again, double check university sites. Here's the key registration info. It's a big grid on screen now. Some things to note is that Cambridge will only accept results from the October 9th to 10th test window. And students in China, Hong Kong and Macau have special test dates. So if that applies to you, do double check. You can pause the video here to review the exact deadlines and fees for your situation. So, how does ESAT compare to NSA and ENGAA? So the ESAT has less time per question than ENGER, but it's based on AS level content, while ENGER is based on A level content. Keep watching to see the overview of what content will be tested in each module. Also, the ESAT is fully digital, unlike the NSAA, which was paper-based when I took the exam. Once again, just to remind you, they will give you spare paper for calculations, but calculators themselves are not allowed. So make sure you practice your mental maths in advance so that you are able to do those calculations just using your head. The ESAT is more accessible in terms of content, but it's still so, so challenging because of the time pressure that they put you under. Here's the score distribution from 2024. The top 1-2% to got 9 the top 5 to 10% got 8, and in general, the average was 4 to 5. Maths 2 was the hardest um, module this year, where the most common score was just 3.5. On the other hand, biology had the highest percentage of high scores. Although most students get between 4 to 5, I want to reiterate there is no pass or fail mark. Every, every application is considered holistically, so getting lower than four does not mean you will not receive an interview or an offer. And me personally, a lot of my friends um, at Cambridge right now doing natural sciences, they got very different scores to me. And there's no consensus on what's the minimum score you have to achieve to get an interview or to get in um, to Cambridge at all. Here's the full syllabus per subject. For Mathematics 1, you'll be covering topics like number, ratio and proportion, algebra, geometry. If you choose the slightly more advanced Mathematics 2, you'll be doing more algebra and functions, also sequences and series, coordinate geometry, trigonometry, integration, differentiation. If you do physics, you'll be doing things like mechanics, matter and waves, electricity, magnetism. If you choose biology, you'll be doing cells, inheritance, genetic technologies, ecosystem, plants. Finally, if you choose chemistry, you'll be doing things like atomic structure, chemical reactions, formulae, quantitative chemistry, and organic chemistry. If you're already studying science or maths at school, you will be familiar with a lot of the content presented in the questions. However, application of this content is really tricky still. So you should revisit topics you struggle with regularly to plug knowledge gaps early on and make sure you practice a lot of different questions so that you're used to the style in which they present the content to you. At Ivory Prep, we offer tailored support for exams like ESAT, TMUA, TSA, UCAT and LNAT. We have a unique programme structure. Each student has one professional tutor and one Oxbridge mentor, where for each of the exams, we conduct 40 hours of prep, solve over 2,000 questions and go through more than 10 mock tests to get you prepared. We want to help you reach your full potential and go into the test with confidence. As you can see on screen, we have already prepared a full four month study plan to help you ace this exam. So we have week wise plans for all the combinations of subjects, a tracker 
to track the questions you're completing, the accuracy you're getting on them, and just so that you know, you can see your progress in real time. Once again, we have the combinations for every subject module. So it's already been personalized for you. You don't have to do any work here. We have broken down the syllabus into four clear months and made it really practical to follow. As you can see at the end there, it concludes with review sessions and mock tests so that once you've covered the content, you can practice it as well. Just make sure to fill out our research form to receive this study plan for free. We'll be posting more breakdowns just like this one, covering TMUA, ESAT, UCAT, LNAT and TSA. We'll have a detailed breakdown of the other competitive exams. We'll have a deep dive into every subject and every subject combination. We'll have specific videos for each subject and we will do past paper walkthroughs. So if this helped you, subscribe and tap the bell icon to stay updated with us. Feel free to comment below with any questions about the ESAT and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching, good luck with your preparation and hopefully we'll catch you in the next video.